Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out why does London have 32 boroughs? Mm -hmm. New York City is divided into five iconic boroughs. Paris is divided into 20 unimaginatively named arrondissements. <laughs> and London too is divided into boroughs, 32 of them. But why 32? Why not four or 703? Mm. Why does London or indeed any big city need to split itself up into bits? That's a good question. Hmm. What is a borough? I don't even know. Greater London is f***ing enormous. With a population about the same as <laughs> the entire Switzerland, if it were run by just one council, it would be gargantuanly huge compared to the next biggest one in England. Whoa. Well, London's, I guess it said 8 million or so. But Birmingham is, Birmingham, excuse me. Leeds, Sheffield, Cornwall, Manchester, Bradford, Durham. A super council like this would be bureaucratic and inefficient, and there'd inevitably be whole neighborhoods that get totally forgotten about. Okay, hang on. The sign behind her says, The London Borough of London. <laughs> Urgent, overdue, inbox, to do. Well, there's garbage in the street, a banana peel, and a dead goat as a can rolls by. Another reason to divide London up is that it's not just big, it's diverse. From the touristy West End, to the densely populated Victorian inner city, to the leafy 20th century suburbs, different parts of the capital have different needs. And what they spend their money on is a local decision that should be decided locally. That's why the city is split into run. several subservient subsections. While London had been subdivided like this for centuries, it had never been subdivided very well. Before 1965, the area we now call Greater London was made up of 86 authorities, based mostly on ancient church parishes, many dating back to the Middle oh. Ages. How many did he say? The area we now call Greater London was made up of 86 authorities. 86? And they were all based on church parishes? Why would the church parishes need to split it up like that? I guess to, like, claim their congregation, maybe? There's lots of evidence of the pre-1965 authorities you can still see today. Walking around London, you may notice street signs that bear unfamiliar names like Borough of St Pancras, Borough of Hampstead, <laughs> Borough of Finsbury, Borough of Hoburn, Borough of Paddington. Some of these old names survive today as parliamentary constituencies, and they also turn up in mm. some unexpected places, such as St Marlborough Crematorium, which is nowhere near Marlborough, and St Pancras Cemetery, which is nowhere near St Pancras. These were named after mm. the councils that built them and not their locations, which in those days were empty countryside. The presence of the ex boroughs can also be felt in some of the lovely town halls they left behind. Lots of these grade two listed buildings have been turned into things. Battersea Town <laughs> Hall is now Battersea Art Centre. Hampstead Town Hall is now Wack Art Centre. Hornsey Town Hall is now Hornsey Town Hall Art Centre, etc, 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 etc. Mm. So what was wrong with these old boroughs and why were they gotten rid of? Under the old system, in this small area of North Woolwich, the primary school was run by the County Borough of East Ham, the emergency services by the County Borough of West Ham, the public baths and library by the Metropolitan Borough of Woolwich, and the secondary school by the London County Council, all within a five minute walk of each other. Confusing. The 86 authorities varied massively in size and what powers they had. There were too many of them and it was a cluttery mess. Wow. And so, in the late 50s, it was decided to slim down from 86 to a more manageable number. Suddenly, <laughs> every authority in London was in danger of disappearing. Except one. Right in the middle of the map is the very small and very confusingly named City of London. Right. This square mile on the site of Roman Londinium has always done things differently from the London that surrounds it. To this day, they have their own separate police force, separate taxes and separate Lord Mayor. The corporation really? that runs the City of London is so old, nobody knows how old it is. The oldest document we can find is from around 12-something, with a little paragraph... We could talk for hours about what makes the City of London weird. Basically, due to its historical <laughs> importance, the city was going to be left alone as it was, but the rest of London was getting a complete overhaul. This is the first attempt at a new map, drawn up in 1957 by the inventor of Greater London, Sir Edwin Herbert, with 52 new boroughs. So why wasn't it used? When this map was shown to the man who had to approve the new boroughs, Minister for Housing and Local Government, Keith St. John Joseph, he didn't like it for two reasons. I don't like it for two reasons. One, these suburban fringes aren't going to be part of London after all. And B, these boroughs are still too small. A proper borough should function like a city in its own right. It should have a natural centre for shops and services, good unbroken lines of communication mm. like roads and rail, and a population no smaller than 200,000. <laughs> A tried and tested size for an efficient council. Just want to point this out. It's probably very obvious, but that map is in the shape of 
a knob. Also, there's a woman here with a fake mustache. He puts these jokes in there, these hidden jokes. Hmm. And today began the task of creating the new, bigger, more powerful burrows, each one more Who's this guy? than the last. This would be achieved by merging the old 86 authorities together in new combinations. Some neighbors were happy to dutifully partner up. But some authorities, actually most of them, were not feeling cooperative, <laughs> making the puzzle much trickier to solve. Just want to point out that this guy has a photo of himself on the wall behind him, wearing the same clothes he's wearing here. He's playing a PlayStation. Bitter long-term rivals East Ham and West Ham were furious about being made to merge. Hornsey was begging for an up-down alliance with lovely Southgate rather than a side-to-side -side one with smelly Tottenham. Woolwich was refusing to give up its weird little enclaves north of the River Thames, a map anomaly dating back to William the Conqueror. But this was precisely the sort of silliness getting rid of this entire exercise was the point of. Wandsworth argued that it already met the criteria to carry on as a borough on its own. And it did, but what would then have happened to Little Battersea? It couldn't join the surrounding Wandsworth or the new combined borough would be too big. The only solution was to slice the old Wandsworth in two. Fights like this were happening in every corner of the capital. But arguably, Keith's most controversial combination was here in northwest London. Wembley was a mostly homeowning, mostly Tory voting, leafy suburb. Willesden was a mostly renting, mostly Labour voting urban neighbourhood. Mm. As well as being nothing alike, the two sides were isolated from each other. There were only two small roads connecting them. Keith was inundated with angry letters from both sides opposing the merger. Well, we gotta read these letters. April 10th, 1963, Dear Shoebridge, the residents of Wembley seem to have set out to inundate the Lord President with complaints about the wembley Willesden merger. The Lord President has no particular interest in this and is replying that he will bring the letters to the attention of your minister. I therefore enclose the first selection of letters for you to deal with as you think fit. Is this real? I think it's real. In Wembley, there exists a strong feeling of outrage at this government's proposal for a shotgun wedding between the boroughs of Wembley and Williston. This feeling is strongest among those who in the past have actively and financially supported the Conservative Party. This merger clearly demonstrates how out of touch the government is with local thoughts, conditions, and requirements when it is prepared to force on 300,000 members of the public a union that is impractical in almost every aspect. Many citizens of Wembley feel that although we may not at this moment have a truly democratic conservative government, we can, by remaining independent, at least have a conservative council, whereas the union will probably mean labor control. I think these are real letters. Many people feel that our present government has forgotten that Englishmen exist in this world as well as British and as Englishmen are entitled to certain rights and freedoms, and that the government would be well advised to cease gazing over the garden fence and spend some time and thought cleaning up its own backyard. Dang. Sassy. This merger is typical of the dictatorial attitude of this government. Fortunately, we the people are not subject to any party whip. I have the honor to remain, my lord, your lordship's obedient servant. Wow. That's some major sass being thrown. And then at the end, he says, my lord. And he's, they say, your lordship's obedient servant. That's very English, isn't it? That's very British. And then at the very bottom of that letter, it says, this guy would almost definitely be a Brexiter, Brexiteer if he wasn't almost definitely dead. There's those jokes. There were only two small roads connecting them. Keith was inundated with angry letters from both sides opposing the merger. But since all the surrounding boroughs had been solved really nicely, and he was in no mood to start all over again, the improbable and impractical shotgun marriage between Wembley and Wilsdon had to go ahead. <laughs> there was no way to give all 86 authorities what they wanted, but of the thousands of potential solutions, Keith calculated that the pattern to make the fewest people unhappy was this one. The answer to the question, how many boroughs should Greater London have, was 32. Hmm. In the end, Keith did rather a neat job, but the fighting was far from finished. The 32 new boroughs now needed names. Oh, rather God. than cause any more arguments, Keith let the new boroughs come up with their own suggestions for what they should be called. But they came back with some really stupid names like <laughs> Osselton Gore, Sorensen Spread, Chigglewanwood, 32, and three of them wanted to be called Riverside, including one not on the river. <laughs> if they want to be trusted to come up with their own names, they have to stick to these rules. A. Give clear indication of location. It's got to be somewhere people have heard of. Two. No silly made-up words. 
and <laughs> most important of all, four absolutely Hall, no Crest, double barrel or unwieldy chip. long names. <laughs> St. Hall Crested Born Penhamp, no double barrel or unwieldy long names. Lewisham and Deptford, Wanstead and Woodford and Ilford and some Chigwell. Oh, double barreled like, um, okay, got it. Under these new rules, most boroughs chose one of their existing names. In most cases, it was obvious which one was most deserving, especially Harrow. Usually, the honor went to the borough with the biggest population, but sometimes it went instead to the borough considered to be the most historically significant. And yes, this mm, did cause sense. massive arguments. It was bad enough being conquered by your neighbor, but imagine having to take their name as well. That's like telling the people of Scotland you're called England now, except nowhere near <laughs> as big a deal. If councils couldn't agree on an existing name, they either had to come up with a neutral compromise or have a neutral compromise imposed upon them. East Ham and West Ham put it to local <laughs> residents to pick a new name, which predictably oh. resulted in the suggestions Ham. Okay, I was wondering why both of those people were wearing pig masks, and now I see it's because it was Ham something. Current name suggestions, Ham Strong, Ham Sandwich, Ham sweet ham. <laughs> I like ham sweet ham. Oh, it got the lowest number of votes. Ham and West Ham put it to local residents to pick a new name, which predictably resulted in the suggestions hamstrung, ham sandwich, and ham sweet ham. The councils <laughs> ignored these and became Aww. New Ham or Newham. The rest oh. of the new solutions, however, were nowhere near as inspired and nearly all broke rule A. Before 1965, hardly anyone was familiar with the ancient names of Havering, Tower, Hamlets, or Hillingdon, which was only chosen because the grandfather of one of the civil servants was a rector of the tiny parish with that name. More lowlights include Red Bridge, named after a red bridge demolished in 1921 that no one remembers, the dully monosyllabic Brent, a poor choice given that a Brent tube station already existed and wasn't in Brent, <laughs> and in my opinion, the worst one, Haringey, named after a small neighbourhood at the southern tip of the borough, but with one of the R's removed and one of the A's turned into an E. The two spellings have been confusing Londoners ever since. Yeah, that would be. Pretty. The 32 names had nearly all been agreed when Keith received a letter uh, from the influential. Let me just. The third. Let me just check this for jokes. Those seem. Those all seem legit. The 32 names had nearly all been agreed when Keith received a letter from the influential and very important Captain John Litchfield, Member of Parliament for Chelsea. The letter said, You better not forget to name Chelsea when you name our new borough, or I'm gonna <laughs> come round here and I'm gonna f or I'm gonna wash this <laughs> But I already promised the Royal Borough of Kensington they could keep their name, he said. What could he do? To save his own skin, he let both sides have their way. Check that for jokes. Royal Borough of Kensington, famous for... So, posh, influential people live there. I'm in trouble if I don't let them keep their name. Famous for Chelsea Flower Show, Royal Hospital Chelsea, Chelsea Football Club. No, that's in Fulham. Oh, interesting. It's crossed out. Posh, influential people live there. I'm in trouble if I don't let them keep their name. To save his own skin, he let both sides have their way, producing the absurd dodecasyllabic the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. <laughs> Keith's own rules made it very clear that this sort of name wasn't allowed, and it was quite an insult to the much larger groups of people who'd campaigned hard for And Deptford and And Battersea. As usual, it was one rule for the very posh who get taken seriously when they complain, and another rule for everyone else. Mm. After decades of pressure, the ministry relaxed the ban on And in 1979 when Hammersmith gained an And Fulham, and in 1980 when Barking gained an And Dagenham. And that's mm. how we got the 32 okay. boroughs with okay. the 32 names that we're still using today. But that's only half the story. How are the London boroughs run today? How is life different from one borough to the next? How can you tell when you've crossed a border from one to the other? And which borough has the best logo? Find out all of this and less in part two. Interesting. The rich people get their way again. What a complicated thing. What, what a, seems like a lot of unnecessary anger and energy over naming a borough. Just the names people get upset about. I don't think the name matters that much. I would love to live somewhere called Ham Sweet Ham. I think that's great. I would love that. I live in Los Angeles County. Boring. Uncreative name. Anyway, another really funny video by Jay Foreman. He's great. Jay, I hope you're doing well. I had a dream where I met you. Which is strange to say in public. I was going into a door and you were coming out of a door. That was it. Really confusing that there's a borough called London and then the whole city is called London.
that 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 seems like just come up with a different name. It's confusing. Maybe they want to confuse tourists. I don't know. Anyway, great video. Once again, Jay Foreman, thank you very much. Thank you all for watching it with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.